Welcome back to Gate Baba. In this lecture, I am going to teach you how sand casting is done and what is the necessary equipment to do this. Right? There are so many casting processes to choose from. Why to choose sand casting? Apart from those, because of these four characteristics. The first one is I choose yellow color. The first one is simplicity. Simplicity means no special skill is required to do the job. Any person without any basic knowledge can be trained within a day and he is able to do the job. Okay, that is what simplicity. And then come to the second characteristics low mold making cost. Generally, in sand casting, mold is made of sand. Sand. What is sand? The major component of sand is silicon dioxide. This is also called as quad. Sand is very cheaper when compared to other casting process. Okay, then there is a special property of sand that is high refractoriness. What is refractoriness? I said it in the introduction video also. D is the property of the mold material. Mold material. Okay, to withstand high temperatures without fusing into the base material. What is base material? Nothing but cast material. Generally, the melting point of quartz is nothing but sand is 1650 degrees Celsius to 1750 degrees Celsius. So it starts melting at 1650 degrees Celsius, right? In iron casting, the highest temperature attained by iron to melt is within 1500 degrees celsius less than 1500 degrees celsius so definitely surely sand will not melt at the temperature okay so we can use the mold material as sand and the fourth characteristic is reusability we can reuse the sand again and again and again until we are getting bored of it okay So, what are the supporting tools required to do sand casting? These are the major tools that are required. Okay, the first one is bellow. Bellow is nothing but blowing of air to remove loose sand. Okay, and these are gate and sprue cutters. This is trowel. This is trowel and this is lifter to lift the pattern material out of the sand and this is hand rammer, hand rammer to ram the sand and this is shovel. If you know a Tom and Jerry show, you surely know about shovel. Okay, always Tom is seated by shovel and the riser pin. This is sprue cutter and this is draw spike important tool and then strike off bar this is the gate cutter okay these are just additional tools required to complete the casting now come to main thing first choose what part what type of part we want to manufacture whether you want to manufacture a flat surface Or you want to manufacture a curved or projected component. If you want a flat surface, you can use single piece pattern. Okay. If you want the curved or projected component, you definitely require split piece pattern.
this is the split piece pattern photo right generally pattern is integrated with core core prints right these are the core prints and there are some guiding pins to exactly match the top part with the bottom part and then come to first the molding body is placed in the ground and then it is clamped with the drag box in the drag box the top of slit pattern is placed in the middle exactly in the middle and then parting sand is poured in that so what is parting sand parting sand parting sand is nothing but common sand but it has fine grain structure fine grain structure why you require fine grain structure on top of and exactly top of the pattern because in sand casting there is a little bit compromise in accuracy and surface finish okay to accommodate high surface finish we use fine grains if for example if we use coarse grain what will happen the grain will embed into the casting material and leave a projection on the casting material this will cause damaging of surface finish so better to use parting sand than molding sand that is general sand okay that is the main use of parting sand please remember this thing and then molding sand is placed on top of the parting sand to just back up and fill the drag after filling drag a hand rammer is used to ram the sand to make sure that sand is flowing to each and every corner of the drag box and then with the strike off bar the excess sand is cleaned and then the pattern is taken out by inverting the drag box after that another pattern is i mean another part of pattern that is lower part of pattern is placed on the core prints so now you understand what is the use of core print if i am not using the core print the pattern will go into the cavity and it will disturb the lower cavity if i use this core prints the pattern is stick to this surface only it will not go under the cavity right that is the use of core print and next core box is placed on above the drag box again parting sand is placed and again the molding sand is filling filled and then it is again rammed softly rammed now use of strike of bar we and then take out take out the clamps invert the cope box invert the cope box remove the pattern remove the pattern right after removing the pattern we will cut some of the gating elements these are the gating elements we cut some of the gating elements runner like a pouring basin sprue after that again both cope and drag are cope and drag are clamped to each other the molder metal is poured in the pouring basin after solidification the mold is breaker as usual i have given you a 3d diagram of sand casting by the way some of the vent holes are also provided these are vent holes on the sand why to provide vent holes outside is atmospheric pressure inside also atmospheric pressure so there must be some air in inside if we pour molten metal in in this pouring basin it will push the air to go so after filling 
cavity some of the air may be left at there this will cause some defects to accommodate to give passage to air we place some of the vent holes right and you can see this is the ladle which carries hot fluid the hot fluid the molten metal is flow, poured in the pouring basin or pouring cup it is entered into the sprue this is down sprue this is having conical shape why it is having conical shape there is a great concept behind it i will teach you in the next lecture okay be patient up to that and then it is entered into the runner it is flows into the cavity and it fills, it fills the cavity and in the riser we will come to know whether the cavity is filled or not by seeing it after filling the runner we stop pouring molten metal into the pouring cup ok this is core core is used to create hollow, hollow shape or hollow surface right this core is supported by the chocolates. These are chocolates. You may get doubt also. We want this shape and we are placing some of the part inside the cavity. Then how I am going to get the shape, required shape? If there is a cavity here or it may be fused into the casting material. Yes, absolutely you are right. The chocolate material is same as that of the casting material. So the melting point temperature of both the materials is same. The pouring temperature is somewhat greater than the pouring temperature is somewhat greater than melting temperature. Right? So that the molten metal will also melt this chocolate material and it will become an integral part of the casting so we do not get any defect we do not get any cavity there right so many have misconception about this so clear that. and also i will give you an important thing riser design this is top riser we can see this is side riser many of them don't know can we use both risers at a time I know how to use top riser. I know how to use side riser. But in this diagram, both risers are placed. Oh my god, what's happening? There is a mystery in that. We will open the mystery in riser design. Wait up to that. So now we learn how to do sand casting. Very easy, very simple. I know. Now we will see some of the advantages of sand casting and limitations and applications also. So what are the advantages? The first advantage is any alloy can be sand casted, right? The second advantage is low tooling cast, low tooling cast. And the third advantage is versatile versatility or versatile is what size, weight and shape. And the fourth advantage is quality and the fifth advantage is timing these are the main advantages of sand casting right and there are also some limitations of sand casting also what are those they little bit compromise in accuracy accuracy means dimension accuracy And pattern maintenance, pattern maintenance, 
because in sand we mix some of the water content that water content will destroy or will cause an effect to the wooden patterns wooden pattern may change its dimension by absorbing the water content so we have to maintain the pattern we have to make sure the pattern dimensions are not changed from casting to casting so that is hectic thing and the third limitation is surface finish and the fourth limitation is laborious the first one is we can make cubical components cubical shaped components second one is fan blades third one is shafts hub and fifth one is machine tool bed this is the important application of sand casting so this is overall concept of sand casting I think this is over. If you like the video, please do like, share, subscribe and don't forget to comment. Thank you.